Hello, and welcome to the video series, The Right Thing to Do, Enhancing Academic Writing Proficiency. My name is Wendy Zimmer, and I'm a PhD student at Texas A&M University, and I have created this video series to help anyone who wants to become a better writer. While I am in the middle of my PhD program and working on the genre of academic writing, this video series will help with academic writing and any type of writing that you may um, be wanting to partake in. So I hope you enjoy this video series. This video is actually the fifth video in this series and it is a second look at writing resources that are available to you mostly free of charge on the internet. And so if you're looking for ways to make your life easier um, without having to go through memorizing grammar rules or finding punctuation tips and tricks and all those pieces and these resources may be for you. This entire program was um, the brainchild of Dr. Pat Goodson, who is a professor at Texas A&M University, and you'll notice her logo in the bottom of this first slide, and she has created the Power Writing Program at Texas A&M University. And so her work, along with her book um, that is fantastic, Becoming an Academic Writer, um, is the foundation for everything that I will be presenting to you today. So if you want to learn more about writing productivity, she is definitely the person to go to. So before we get started, the fourth video in this series looked at the first set of writing resources. So if you see these resources and either you love them and you want to learn more, or it's not exactly what you're looking for, you may want to go to the previous video, video number four, to see if some of those resources are better for you. So let's get started. The first thing we do in any video, and what you should do anytime you sit down to write, is brain dump. And in short, what a brain dump is, is just a period of time. You set your timer. I'm big on timers in this writing program because it helps you with your productivity. So you set your timer for about three minutes and you just dump everything in your head out on paper because part of writing productivity is being able to focus on your writing and what it is that you're trying to do. And so you can't be thinking about what you're making for dinner or assignments that you have due or any of those pieces. So what I want you to do is start with and set your timer for about three minutes. Get a piece of paper or open a blank Word doc on your computer. Pause this video when you're ready and just dump everything in your head down on paper so you can really focus on your writing today. And when you're done, unpause this video and we will get started. Okay, so hope your brain dump went well and that you are now clear and your mind is ready to focus on your writing. While this video does not specifically look at writing habits, there's a video dedicated just to writing habits. So if you want to learn more about writing habits, definitely see that video. You always need to constantly be thinking about your writing habits. So just things to think about before we get started. Have you scheduled writing into your week this week? Have you made it a priority? If you have not, do so. Are you writing daily? Are you logging your writing as you write daily? And do you have an accountability partner? If you don't, I have given you my email. I would love to be your accountability partner. I am many people's accountability partner. And so if you want to learn more about that, please email me. And if any of these pieces you want more information on, like I said before, go back to a previous video and we specifically highlight writing habits to increase your productivity and that's always a good place to start. So here are the resources that are covered in video four, and then we are going to finish here in video five. And they're just by no means an extensive list of all the resources that are out there for writing productivity, but they are resources that I use and that have greatly helped my writing, and I hope they will help you as well. So the first one we're gonna look at today is Google. And Google has so many resources, but they have another resource that I did not find until just recently that I wanted to show you. And so I'm going to get out of my screen here real quick to kind of guide you through. And if you do not have an account with Google, I highly recommend you getting one. I use Google Docs in some form or another in everything I do, and it really helps my writing and my collaborating go much more smoothly. But if I open a new tab, and um, my search engine default is Google, and you will see over here all of my things. Um, but if I go to what looks like this little 3x3 three three matrix, it pulls up the Google um, app 
applications that I use most often. And so I'm going to go into my Google Drive, which is probably going to be a hot mess, so I apologize in advance. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to not worry about anything that I already have created, because that doesn't matter at this point. I'm going to go over and just create a new Google Doc. And for those of you that are not familiar, Google Doc is Google's version of like a Word document um, or any kind of document type software. So I'm just going to go to Google Doc and create a new one, just a blank document. Now most people just use this to type and to sit down and type, and that's fine. Oftentimes when I am just generating writing, which is a different video, by the way, but when I'm sitting down and just getting my thoughts on paper, I use this as any kind of other word processor and I just dump down my thoughts. But there is another feature that I find greatly beneficial, especially if I'm not in the mood to write per se, or if I am interviewing someone else and I don't want to transcribe, or any of those pieces, Google Doc has incorporated a voice type feature into their programs. And so if you go, and if you're not familiar with Google Doc, all of these um, tabs up here at the top have multiple things that go with them. And so generally a lot of them are things that you're used to seeing. If you go to file, if you go to edit, so none of these pieces should just be completely new if you've used any kind of word processing system before, um, but nonetheless, in case you're unfamiliar, just to give you a kind of piece that go with that. Now, and there's a table um, option as well. If you go into tools, there is a little microphone that next to it says voice typing, or you can also do control shift S. And if you click on voice typing, it pulls up a little microphone and it's literally as simple as talking into a microphone if your computer has a microphone in it. Um, and this also works on the application if you have a Google Drive app on your phone, which is helpful if you're in the car and you want to text to type, um, or not even text to type because you're not texting, but if you want to speak to type with the ideas, I think of it like the old kind of um, audio recorders that you held in your hand. So if I click on this microphone, and then I have to allow my computer to use it. And then as I speak, it will type for me. Now, the issue right now is that with the um, video running on my computer, it's going to be slow. But for you, you will have no delay whatsoever. And it comes on and it just starts typing what you say. And so it says, my computer keys it, it's supposed to say sees it, but I delayed because it delayed. And then as I speak, it will type for me, and it goes on and on and on. And the video running on my computer, it's going to be slow, but for you, you will have no delay whatsoever. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop. It will let me. And so, it's not perfect. It's like any other software, it's going to have issues, it's going to have difficulty, there's going to be pieces, this is not something you're going to then turn in. But... It does a beautiful job, as you can see, for the most part, of typing what I say. And what I have found with this, and I can go ahead and save it if I wanted to. I'm not going to. Um, I do not want to save it. But this works for people with accents. And honestly, the more you use it, Google is amazing. Um, the more you use it, the more it kind of gets used to your accent and it gets used to your voice. And in that way, it really will start to learn kind of the nuances of what you say and even do a better job the more you use it. So Google Voice Typing is one resource that can really be very beneficial. The second one, I'm only going to show you one of these, but it's mind mapping. And there are many resources available to do mind mapping on the internet. Um, I use free ones for many reasons, but mainly because I think they do just as good of a job as the ones you pay for. Now there are, I use Coggle most often. I've just started using Lucidchart and Lucidchart is really neat in some of the features that it offers, but I haven't learned all the pieces yet. 
Um, but especially with Coggle, there are some, there are many free options that I can do basically everything I need to do in the free options, but there are some pay for options. So you have to make the decision as to whether you think it's worth paying for or not. The subscription is not expensive, um, but I don't like to spend money if I don't have to. So there is that. So I'm going to go ahead um, and you do have to set up an account with Coggle. Apparently it's not working today for me, but you do have to set up an account with Coggle to go in and basically so it'll save your projects that you are working on. Because otherwise, if it doesn't save your projects, you have no way to modify them in all of those pieces. And so Coggle is very simple. You can see that I've used it before. I'm actually using it. And this one was thinking through my dissertation and what I want dissertation to look like. And then I've kind of to piece it as I go. But if I create a new one, um, the system itself is incredibly user friendly. And so say I'm writing, I'm working on my technology integration piece for my survey development, which is what I'm working on. And so I literally just type it in. And then if I want to do another arm off of that or another branch off of that, this could be teacher use. And then I can do another branch that would be student use. And then I can do another branch for theoretical background. And then off of these pieces, like for teacher use, I can have a branch that says possibly I'm looking at how they use it in their lesson plans. I'm looking in how teachers use technology integration in their personal lives. I'm looking at technology integration that is incorporated into professional development. And I can go along with these and I can insert pictures and I can insert links and I can move these pieces around based upon where I want them to be. It's very simple. It helps you get all your thoughts down in a way that is, for some people, very organized. And so if mind mapping is something that you think would be beneficial for you, then I highly recommend Coggle, Coggle it, um, and Lucidchart is also beneficial. The next one is not really a tool, it's definitely more of a resource, and this is Manchester Phrase Bank. And what Manchester Phrase Bank is, is it's a resource created by the University of Manchester, obviously, and the people that have created this, I, I cannot believe it's free. I'm going to be completely honest to you because of the wealth of information that is here. So the idea behind it is if you're writing and you get to a point where you're like, I don't know how to word this. Okay, maybe I want to give an example of something. Or maybe I want to transition from one piece to the next. Then you can come in and you can click on it and it gives you tons of sentence starters as to what to do that or how to do that. So the section below describes what follows is an account of regarding X, so whatever your um, construct is. As discussed above, it really gives you ideas. If you have a difficult time transitioning from one paragraph to the next or one sentence to the next, it gives you ideas on how to do it. Or if you want to compare and contrast and you find yourself using compare, compare, compare all the time. You can look at it and say there are a number, number of similarities between the effects of X on human health are similar to those of Y. All of those pieces. And how you compare with one sentence. And how you can compare within one sentence. And differences across two sentences. And it goes on and on. And it gets into quantities and trends and how you define terms. And this is amazing. So if you find yourself stuck and you're using the same words and you're using the same vocabulary, this resource really does a great job of helping you through that process of mixing it up so your writing sounds more interesting. Um, oftentimes people raise questions about plagiarism as far as this goes, and you don't need to worry about plagiarism with these sentence starters because there's nothing, there's no facts. You're not saying something that needs to be cited. These are just wordsmithing basically, putting words together in a way that makes it clear and concise, um, but it's not taking any information. Any information that would be considered plagiarism is the stuff that you're going to put in yourself. So this is a wonderful resource. 
that I highly recommend to you if you have never seen this one. Some other ones that I'm not going to talk about a ton today because they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, this power.tamu.edu is Dr. Goodson's program that I was talking to you earlier about. Anything that's tamu.edu is um, from a and &M. If you are an A&M faculty or student, you can totally take advantage of this resource, graduate student, um, not undergraduate student, but graduate student. If you are not, then this one does not apply to you, so you should come to A&M. This one, Pro Writing Aid, is very similar to Grammarly, which I went over in video four. So if you're um, interested in anything that is a web-based program where you put your writing, either upload it or you copy and paste it, and then the program goes through and shows you capitalization errors and punctuation errors and grammar errors, we're looking at verb tenses, um, and transition issues and pieces like that. Um, in video four, I go over Grammarly.com. ProWritingAid is very similar. OneLook.com is a reverse dictionary, and I am going to actually go to this one because I find it useful in some situations. It's not one that I use all of the time, um, but I definitely use it when I am missing a word. And so, or or if I can't think of a word. So if you're sitting here and you're like, oh, there's this word, and it starts with an E, and it's talking about whatever, or it sounds like this, um, then this is what one look is useful for, and it kind of gives you some examples. So if you're like, okay, I know there's this word, and it's talking about, like, describe something, I don't know, then you can type, you can click on related words and it will start to give you some ideas. Were you meaning description? Was it some sort of instrument? Descending? Um, and it goes through, and a lot of it they'll put in weird, like to try to make you think. Like does that sound like anything? Does this sound like anything? And this was not the best example. But it will put you in pieces where maybe it would be helpful, maybe it would not. Um, this was not the best example, like I said. Or if I'm trying to find a synonym for maybe understand, because I use that word entirely too much in my writing, it gives me synonyms, but it also gives me more than just synonyms. And it gives me words that are related to understand. It also gives me the definition. But it gives me pieces where I may not exactly want to say understand, but I may want to say insight or I may want to say recognition, or I may want to say interpret. And so it helps me with the, that wording that kind of connects it together that I may not be able to do on my own or I can't come up with on my own. So this one is beneficial. And then the last one on this list is just onlinestopwatch.com. If you look at my writing resources um, video, Number four, first of all, gives you some things on timers, but every single video that I have created talks about using a timer. Some through the Pomodoro technique, some through just literally sitting down and using a timer. And time using a timer is key for writing productivity because it really keeps you on track. So if you want more information on that, please watch the other videos because they will help you. So those are our writing resources and like I said that is not every resource that is available online by any means but between video 4 and the video that you just watched it I gave you a good overview of many of the resources I use to increase my writing productivity and it really has not only increased the amount that I write but the quality of what I write it's not just quantity it's definitely quality and it's made my life a lot easier and increased my confidence which is then in turn increase my writing productivity. So I definitely might recommend you use some of these resources and if you use them and you like them or you don't like them please comment and let me know why. And just to leave you with a couple reminders make sure you're writing every day make sure you're logging your writing every day and if you want a template for logging go back and watch my previous videos and they will give you ways to log your writing. So Thank you very much for watching this video with me today. I hope you found it beneficial. Have a great day. Bye.